Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here. The PokerStrategy.com TSL 3 round of four day one. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow we'll talk more about it uh, after we're all done. But Naniwa versus Hasuabs uh, for the day two best of three. But right now, two Terrans battling it out. One with a two game lead. That is Thorzane. We've got Empire Kaz, our red Terran in the southeast and all the way over on the other side after you hike for like five days we have got Thorzane, our blue Terran in the northwest he's up three games to one chill certainly has an advantage um and there's a you know a lot of wiggle room for him here right and i i want to focus on you know a lot of people said going to this match that Thorzane is not a tvt specialist he's very weak tvt kaz is known versus Terran versus Terran, but even in the game he lost, Thorzine has looked solid. He, yeah, he gave up a pretty big advantage in the game he lost to Metalopolis, but he played very well to come back and, and to fight strongly with uh, with what he had. So I, I'm very impressed by Thorzine. Looking forward, as you said, this is a uh, set point. So potentially, after this game, we could see Thorzine going into the finals. And I want to remind everyone, that that is going to be at the TLHQ, the headquarters in New York City. And I see a note here by uh, Hotbeat himself that they may be announcing uh, a meet and greet for the fans after the TSL final. So if you're rooting for Thorzan and he gets through cause in this match, uh, you can travel down to New York City and get to meet him, which will be great. And I don't know how I couldn't go there given uh, my heterosexual man crush on him. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure, you know, there are no barriers when love is involved, Chill. <laughs> Just remember that. So scouting going on here by Thorzane, getting his SCV out a little bit earlier than his opponent. Cause Orbital up for both players. And we have the Marines going out. And here's pretty much typically where we've got that fork in the road. Every TVT has a fork in the road. But when you put two players up against one another, um, and wow, okay. Nope, right. I take it back. Fork's gonna we're keep we're still going down the same road, Chill. As uh, both players are gonna drop a command center, and why not? This is the map to do it. Don't even need to float it. Just put that bastard down right there on the front. <laughs> Who cares? And uh, both players will pretty much uh, mimic that uh, style here to start off. Yeah, this this is crevasse TVT. You know, it's so windy and so long, especially cross positions, but it, it really doesn't even matter that they're cross positions for this. It's just safe to put down that fast command center, and that's why we yeah. see both players doing it. I want to kind of point out that crevasse is a little bit like a, a stretched out crossfire TVT in that we have this similar position outside the third base, which it's very easy to siege up on the high ground and put that siege down into either a containment or to put that siege uh, shelling the third base, kind of your natural expansion outside. So this is kind of a position we've seen on Crossfire where they would go for the two base and then attack very aggressively. This is probably going to follow suit with that, but it's going to be after three base. But uh, we see Thorazane actually adding a third barracks in a little bit of a sneaky position. Kaz just stacking his up right on top of each other, Jenga style. So both players are going to be going three barracks. Yeah, um, and we do have an add-on going down. Uh, Thorzane with his tech lab on the way. Uh, looks like we still got Empire Cause with scouting uh, SCV here. He really doesn't know. I mean, he probably knows now where his uh, opponent is, but it looks like a little small uh, force is going to move out here for Thorzane and uh, possibly either take control, clear out any SCVs that might be making his way over, really denying some uh, some good information here. And yep, here he goes. He'll snipe this SCV very, very close. And oh, SCV gets away. Thank, thankfully, that guy was late to breakfast. He, he came back out, took, that, took care of that. And uh, we're all good now on that front. So one thing to consider here, uh, Chill, right now is we're about even uh, as well. We've got factory going down for both players. No, we have no factory for Thorzane. So factory going down for Cause. Uh, meanwhile, he's going to go for upgrades on his Marines with double engineering bay. Right. We've got diverging paths here. It's really interesting to me. Cause has a faster eBay going plus one. Thorzane is going actually Marine Shield first, uh, Combat Shield to get that plus 10 on his. Uh, Marines, which is going to finish very early, and then as you just mentioned, he's going to get that double engineering bait to get the double upgrades on his Marines. So we should expect to see 
very, very heavy pressure uh, from Thorzane in the mid game. Either that, uh, either we're going to see a timing attack or he's just going to establish map control, use that to get uh, a third base very quickly and then transition into double factory. Both are viable. I'm really interested to see which one Thorzane ends up going for. Well, and you know, you, you talked about how it was a stretched out crossfire. And the one thing about the middle is the fact that there are no little, like cute little barriers that you've got to go around in order to get to the other side. It's very wide open. And so if Thorzane does do some sort of push and try to contain like he had done in the previous matchups, hold the phone here. We do have cause with yet another command set. We may have lost DJ Weed. I'm not sure. I don't hear him. But uh, we've got this command center at the natural for Kaz going down. That may play directly into Thorzane's hands as I believe he's going for a 1-1 timing. He has plus one armor uh, started just about to complete. It's at uh, 100 of 160. Weapons also that uh, at a similar pace. And Stimpak also almost complete. We've got a money scan drop. It may not be a timing. I'm trying to piece this together. Because Thorzane is putting down a factory now, may want to add a starport. No, what is going on? Okay, so now he's adding an armory and a starport, so it's not going to be any sort of 1 1 medevac timing. Looks like it's just a strong marine pressure uh, that Thorzane has going in. Meanwhile, Kaz has safely completed his third command center at his natural. He's got that up, mining going to start dropping mules down there. Let's see how he transitions out of this. It's very interesting to see that he's got this third base up quicker than Thorzane getting uh, the majority of his Marines out and getting those upgrades rolling quickly. With the Armory completing for Thorzane, I'm going to expect to see that plus two, plus two started, which leads me to believe this may actually be a plus two, plus two timing. It looked, the way the build is structured, it looks more like a timing than just, you know, I like to get upgrades on my units because they're very strong. But he has sacrificed a little bit of economy as uh, that natural is up for cause. Uh, whereas Thorzane is just about to complete his command center, uh, transitioning into uh, siege tanks is cause. Does not have that siege mode. We'll have to keep an eye on that, as that was devastating last game. Getting the uh, the barracks up. There's a drop in the natural actions. Cause is dropping some marines in there. Looks like this is going to be cleaned up very quickly by Thorzane. Not a lot of value gotten by Cause. Taking a look at the supplies, very even. 91 for Empire Cause, 92 for Prey Thorzane. He has now started the plus, well, plus two, plus two, excuse me, floating that command center over to the natural. Going to drop that down and take that. He's actually got a Hellion out as well, which is a little bit surprising. Let's see if he uses that for scouting or if that's going to be part of the army composition. Has he transitioned into tanks yet? Yes. No siege on the way either for uh, for Thorzane. As he, he's now pressuring out. Taking a look at the upgrades, which is key to this timing, plus one, or excuse me, plus two attack. Just about halfway complete. Kaz taking another base, really pushing out. 115 supply for Kaz, 110 for Thorzane. Sitting outside the Zelnaga watchtower, not Zelnaga for everyone. Freaking out about that. We've got more, it's just marine tank all day for Kaz. Uh, we've got a drop for Thorzane coming around, swinging around into the natural. This turret is in position, gonna hit one of the medevacs. I believe it will not take it out, no. Switching target, and meanwhile, Kaz is pressing forward, trying to hit the army of Thorzane in the middle, but he's not going to be able to snipe it. Thorzane dropping the units in the natural of Kaz. Going to be able to clean up so many SUVs as the SUVs are trying to run away. Thorzane, oh my god, he's going for the command center. I don't know if this is that great of an idea with all the SUVs repairing. Just asking for it, starting to get taken out as Kaz bring in units. He's got to get a comp competent defense together. Stimming and bringing all his units together. Thorzane going to be cleaned up here by Kaz. And he's going to try to run away and actually gets a moving load up and is able to fly away. I'm very surprised by that. Take a look at the state of the upgrades. And so, oh my god! The me Oh my god. Medivac almost getting taken out by that missile turret, but it gets out with 12 HP. So, so oh my god, Stimmarine! Oh my god, that was sick. Kaz moves in and swipes down that Medivac, evening up the supplies. 125 for Thorazine. 130 for cause upgrades for Thorazine plus one armor completed. Oh, excuse me, plus two plus two just now completed as we mentioned. I'm back too, chill. I'm really sorry about that. 
brother. Go ahead, Weed. I've been talking I, forever. Get in here, buddy. I, I, I know. And, uh, you know, I want to just rewind a, a tad there. I thought that, yeah, that drop uh, by Thorzane on that little uh, wing expansion was a little weak. But hold on. We got a skirmish in the middle. And you can see a lot of Marines here, only a couple of tanks. They are going to siege up, do some pretty serious damage here. But Kaz, uh, he is behind on those upgrades. And so even with the medevac support, you're going to see how well those upgraded Marines do versus the army of Kaz. So Thorzane, uh, you know, remember he started that early Inji Bay actually getting uh, too close in range. Ow! Oh, move that siege take away, but he is, uh, it is getting absolutely devastated there. And now he'll try to siege up here, try to take some control, but cannot do it. Cause too quick those Marines. But you see how uh, how important it was, the, those d double NG bays with the Marines. He's going plus three on both, and that will wow. give him a little extra advantage at this point in the game, Chill. I think that that's probably going to be one of those things that will play in heavily here uh, as we do not see uh, level two coming out. Just started now for Empire Cause, so he's going to be behind there. And you know what else is just about to complete for Cause is Siege Mode. He is so lucky that he got to live through forgetting yeah. Siege Mode yet again as Siege Mode just completes for Cause. I, I feel like Thorazine is not abusing the terrain as well as he should be. He should just be sitting on this high ground, raining down uh, fire onto this expansion. But no, Cause is going to stim and run in and he's going to be able to crush the heavily upgraded army of Thorazine. Going to be able to take out all the Marines, Metavax now in full retreat. I feel like Thorazine is, is just so far behind. Cause is going to be able to establish control in the middle of the map and bring it back. I think Thorazane had a good idea with the upgrades, but just it's not really paying dividends for him. Yeah, I, I mean, in this case, at least, if he's going to keep on attacking in these smaller groups, it definitely is. And he must have a miss rally here going right into this line of siege tanks now. Now, remember, we do uh, we do have, of course, the rocks that can be a sort of a shortcut into the base of Cause Cause temporarily supply block there as he's trying to get some more Marines out. And it does look like we're going to have a command center going down. And do it. Did I see another one being built? It does look like another one is going to go down. So two more going out. And here now we've got Empire Cause moving forward. And so will he take the middle of this map and uh, still do some damage? And here we go. He's going to step forward. Only a few siege takes in the back, and it will do some damage. But oh my gosh, now this expansion is going to be at serious risk as well. It starts uh, starts going into an orbital, but uh, will quickly cancel, try to lift off. And how far will Empire Cause push? Yeah, that's really the question. He's got complete map control. He's got uh, economic dominance here and uh, also production dominance. As you can see, he's got so many barracks in his main base, four of them with reactors. He really does not have to risk anything, continue to push forward. Taking a fifth base at the uh, top left's inside kind of pocket expansion. And before doing that, just wanted to be safe. He put up those two turrets, actually put up a depot as well before dropping this command center. Thorazin is not out of it yet at 150 supply versus 160. And looks like he's gonna push forward yet again, trying to siege up, trying to take out these tanks. He's got a nice spread as he scans and stims and moves oh, forward wow. with those heavily upgraded Marines. He's able to cut through that like hot butter with those three, three Marines doing so much damage and absorbing so much tank fire so well. And as oh. he had that backup command center, he's gonna land it. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a crazy, crazy smart decision, I think, there by Thorzain. He's now going to try to push forward and regain control of this middle. Wow. He does as a stim hits. These Marines completely cut through his opponent. And now, once again, Thorzain with the advantage. Now, you know, the reason for attacking was really smart there. He had the upgraded Marines. It was mostly siege tanks. And if he was willing to take a little bit of hit to the, uh, to the Marines there, of course, he was going to be able to cut through those with the DPS of the Marines, no problem. So I think while Thorzane was a little distracted, he must have struck because the Metavax even stood there and did absolutely nothing. He made no conscious effort to move those out of the way. So there was a lot lost by Kaz in that last battle. Yeah, and I, I also want to take a look at uh, the dynamic of the upgrades. Thorzane has reached 3-3. And of course, as we all know, StarCraft places arbitrary limits on research and says 3-3 is as far as you can go. So while he's sitting at that incredible upgrade advantage, 
Paz didn't rush to 3-3, but he's slowly getting there. Plus 3 is coming. Yeah. And once he gets to 3-3, Thorzane is going to lose a big advantage that he had throughout the mid-game. And we can see he's sitting by the Zalnega, raining down fire on this planet here. Very uncomfortable position for Kaz, and we can see he's respawning by trying to be in the middle of the map, and Thorzane trying to snipe uh, a medevac in the bottom. But uh, Kaz is just going to run around. This is an orbital at the fourth for Thorzane, so he has to be extremely careful and bring units back to defend. Yeah, wow, this is actually a phenomenal response by Thorzane. He's going to take the tower. He'll siege up here, but he might actually want to move one of those siege tanks forward just a little bit. He wasn't going to get there in time, uh, and it does look like he is going to be containing all around. Now, he might attack into this directly. Tank is not sieged, and uh, once again, the upgrades will prevail there. And as you mentioned, in a moment, that advantage is actually going to be Nolan Boy. Meanwhile, we've got Empire Cos moving up, wanting to regain control of the center. One siege takes goes down, but he's fighting into an awful lot. A ton of Marines coming to back it up. But if all the Marines of Kaz are depleted, well, then these siege tanks can easily go down. They'll drop right on top of each other. Oh, my God, the tanks unsiege. And that means that that might mean Thorzane can move forward. He will not. And this is a truly back and forth battle here, Chill. Yeah, we, this game is madness. They're both sitting at 75 harvesters. Their incomes are both around 2,000, depending on the mules. When they drop a lot of mules, we're going up to 3,000 minerals per minute. They're both sitting on five bases, and they're just cranking out a ton of units, fighting for uh, dominance in the center of the map. Really, really a, a close game, and I have no idea who's going to take this down. As we can see, the lines are drawn. Thorzane having a little bit more... Uh, territory, but Kaz has a little bit higher supply and being more active running around with his units. Thorzane doesn't have the benefit of the uh, planetary fortress, so uh, his fourth and fifth very vulner vulnerable to uh, these aggressive runarounds that Kaz has been doing. Uh oh, and I think Kaz is up to another one right here. Chili's gonna go around the back, check for the other expansion, but if he just peeks up with the single marine. He's going to find it, and uh, there it is. As he's going to do a ton oh, of damage huge. right here. This might actually force an attack from Thorzane. Uh, this is almost exactly what Thorzane, uh, excuse me, what Kaz did to, uh, excuse me, Thorzane did do to Kaz in the last game, as I'm getting a little bit mixed up there. Medivac's going into the main. Production is now under fire here, and this is another great response by Thorzane. Chill, this could do some serious damage to Kaz. This is... Kaz has to act perfectly. This is so difficult for him. If he gives up his position in the middle fully, he's going to lose the game. But if he doesn't respond quickly and properly, he's also going to lose the game, losing all his production facilities. We can see he's done well to stop the first attack, but now he has to be careful. Thorzane unseaging. He's getting ready to break into Kaz's fourth. And here we go. Pressing forward, stimming, moving the tanks, trying to siege up. This is crazy. He's going to break through the tank line. Kaz trying to siege from below, but it looks like it's not going to work as all his numbers are falling down. The supplies both falling down. And somehow Kaz finds a micro to load up and drop on the tanks, killing so many tanks. Oh my god. This is madness. Supplies dropping to 150 for both of them. Kaz still has his small army trying to drop, drive into the natural of Thorzane. Thorzane is aware of it. Bring his reinforcements back. Thorzane is continuing to push through the center. He sieges up, raining fire down on so many units of Kaz. Kaz trying to defensively see. This is madness, DJ Wee. It is absolutely insane. Another attack here from Kaz, but finally there is going to be enough units here for Thorzane to be able to protect that. Meanwhile, Kaz knows that he's got to make an attack with no Marines. He goes up against these siege tanks here, and it looks like he's actually going to win it. All the siege tanks are gone. Only thing left some medevacs. A few more units making their way in right now, but we have suddenly gone to 130 supply, down from about 180 for both players. Thorzane is quickly, quickly reinforcing. Kaz is looking for another expansion, but Thorzane does have this Marines and Medivacs right here. If he realizes he does have the tower, he's going to realize what's going on. He could do some damage to these SCVs and actually take a pretty killer lead, but Thorzane's just going to push forward. He wants this position that he has been fighting for the entire game. Thorzane also getting a bunch more expansions up, and uh, it is just going back and forth, but both players wanting to stabilize. If we look at the supplies, they're dead even, but if we can look at the income tab for a second, I don't know if this was fully realized that there's actually a 40 harvester difference between the two wow. Thorzane sacrifice, a lot of SCVs, and that means his army is approximately 40 supplies stronger than Kaz's, despite the supplies being very even. 
and he has a better position. He's sieging both the eastern front and the southern front at the same time. Cause is forced to give up the southern front. He's going to kill some units from the planetary. Oh my god, he's going to kill a lot of marines with the planetary. Repairing that with the SCVs. Looks like it's actually going to get a full repair, possibly. Thor's ain't trying to kill it, and now Kaz is trying to break through the west, or excuse me, the eastern front. He's going to be able to do it successfully. He may be able to stabilize and break through as he's moving forward. He's going to have to siege up, but Thor's ain't has the answer. Stimming and running forward, taking out all the siege tanks, equalizing the supplies yet again, and he has taken out the planetary fortress, and he's actually moving forward to take out Kaz's last mining base. Oh my god, he's done it! Good game, well played, good luck in the finals. Oh my god, Thorzine, you're so handsome. That, you know, I think when you go back and you look in some of those marine tank battles, um, it used to just be all about the spotting. And, you know, how how well can I spot? How well can I, like, cheat some positions here? Snipe a, a tank here and there? But what we really saw from uh, Thorzane in several of the series was his ability to take his massive ball of marines, shoot forward, and really spread to minimize that damage. And that's how he was getting the job done most of the time. You also notice at the end there, he was attacking another expansion from Kaz. So a really, really phenomenal showing from a guy who uh, allegedly had the worst TVT of the two. He certainly showed some mad skills uh, in this matchup. Yeah, just, you know, I, I said this just privately before the broadcast starts. Thorzane has had the biggest Cinderella story I think we've ever seen in the TSL and possibly in StarCraft 2 thus far. He came in, you know, relatively unknown, possibly known to, to Europeans or WarCraft D fans, but I think the majority of people did not know his name. He doesn't have the greatest of results, especially in lands, but he came to play. Look at who he's gone through. TSL Fruit Dealer, and then he went through Liquid Tyler, now he's gone through OGSMC, and today we saw him go through Kaz, an underdog in every matchup. He's going to be in a TVP final, and what I'm looking forward to is the, the question that's going to be answered tomorrow is who is his op opponent going to be in that final? It's either going to be Mouse Hazwabs or Dignitas Naniwa, and looking at either of those opponents, you could make the argument that Thorzane is going to be an underdog yet again in the finals. I, I I think that that's very, very much the case. Now, it'll depend on which way it goes, Chill, because I think that if Naniwa does win over Hasuabs tomorrow, that most players are going to probably gravitate to, well, they'll definitely say he's the underdog if he's going yes. up against Naniwa. You know, quite frankly, if it is Hasuabs versus Thorzane in the final, I think we've got just sort of a double Cinderella story in the way that Hasuab's qualified, how it came down to just a few points, and he had to win this qualify. I mean, do you remember that one TL Open where it's like, okay, here are the eight criteria that Hasuab <laughs> right, needs right, right. in order to win this, you know, and get his qualification in. And it was a very, very nervous and trying time for him, but he did. He's in the round of four and now a best of seven tomorrow against Naniwa, a player who has just kind of been crushing fools as of late. Um, you know, a guy that went pretty much undefeated through the regular play of MLG, uh, the last MLG event. You know, he's been doing uh, very successful in some other leagues that we've seen as of late. So, chill. Uh, that's going to be one I'm not going to want to miss tomorrow. And it, and. You know, we've seen some PVPs. You just saw a round of four PVP uh, in GSL not too long ago. You know, I, I think it's still going to be an interesting one. Um, so people better tune in tomorrow for day two. That's going to be Naniwa versus Hasuabs. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and, and the thing that's really interesting about PVP in the TSL format is that players have two weeks to study each other and come up with this is the perfect counter to this person's typical style on this map and i think yep. a lot of the boring aspects of pvp kind of wash away when you bring it to that format so i'm extremely interested to uh to tune in tomorrow that's going to be casted by day nine and husky and we're going to see which one of those products is going to move into the finals to take on thorzane and don't forget about kaz because there's actually going to be a third place fourth place match as well where kaz is going to join us yet again to play the loser of tomorrow's match so those are going to be some exciting TVPs uh, going on uh, next week. So uh, definitely looking forward to that. Also, according to our notes here, 
Artosis is coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, well, it says it in my notes that Hotbit gave me, and Hotbit's <laughs> never wrong. Yeah, Hotbit's Hot never, Bid ever never wrong. wrong. Okay, he's telling me he's wrong. I just wanted to razz him a little bit. Artosis is not coming. Tomorrow is day nine and Husky. Artosis getting ready for his final week of uh, GSL there. So, guys, I, I want to say thanks uh, for everyone who tuned in. A very exciting TVT. I got to be honest, chill. You know, I hear TVT. I'm kind of like, uh because they're not, you know, I don't play them Dude, very these well. Games were and I sick. Don't. But those games were sick, especially that last one. Um, and, oh you God. know, I just love to see that constricting play um, that we saw out of Thorzane in the first two matchups. So it was really good, guys. Don't forget, VODs will be up on the uh, Team Liquid YouTube. You can also check out the official TSL3 threads and uh, make sure that you, they'll, they'll be posted up there. Make sure you watch them if you missed them or any games you might want to go back and review. And guys, the raffle will be drawn after the finals. So your time is running out. It's literally T minus seven and a half days or something. Go sign up, teamliquid.net slash raffle. Get your sign up on, get your free 50 bucks, and uh, get entered into the raffle for a trip to Korea. Cannot wait. And I guess don't forget to tune in for uh, DJ Wheat and Chill tomorrow at, uh, what time is that EST? Is it noon? 12 p.m. EST. I do believe it is on the calendar on High Team noon. Liquid correctly. I will check that. But yes, uh, we'll be talking about uh, all sorts of good stuff. Actually, really interested in talking about a little GSL uh, stuff mm. that's been going on. So, oh uh, And we'll talk a little bit about this matchup that's going to be taking place, taking you pretty much right in to the day two of TSL 3. Just gently gliding everyone in there. And as for all the viewers, I will join you right now in the Thorazine fan club, which I am opening right now because he is so handsome. And I can't wait to see him in the finals. <laughs> That's actually the fourth time that Chill has mentioned that he is handsome. I, and I'm actually not, the fifth I'm not time ashamed because of it. I'm, I you mentioned it during the break, too. You did. You, yes. During the break, even Chill was like, Are you oh, counting? So I, I was keeping track. Handsome, I've got a little... Look at him. In fact, at one point, I got mixed up because I, I looked at what I thought the game progress won, and I was like, Oh, no, that's actually the time that, that uh, Chill has said Thorzane is <laughs> handsome. <laughs> So that's why I was off by one that, that other time. So, guys, it's been a blast. We'll see you tomorrow on Weapon of Choice. And we'll also see you tomorrow for the TSL 3. That's going to be starting around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Day 9 and Husky. And join us for the party beforehand. It is going to be a PvP to the death. And the winner will move on to the finals to face Thorzane. Will it be Dignitas Naniwa or will it be Miles Hasuabs? You're going to have to tune in tomorrow to find out. I'm DJ Wheat. Joining me is Chill. And on behalf of the entire Team Liquid staff, thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow for the round of four, day two.